So I'm here today in a field of a veer on oilseed rape in Atboy County Mead. It's the middle of February. I'm joined by the host farmer, Peter McGuinness, and he's agronomist and advisor, Ronan Lynch from Deeside. So Peter, it was your first time growing oilseed rape last year. You hit the jackpot. Yeah, yeah, got off to a good year. Uh, sold crop of veer on as well on the, around the 20th of August. Crop did very well, yeah. I would use a lot less nitrogen than I would have thought it would have been needed to be used. But you were saying that some of your friends or neighbours were a bit worried when you told them how much nitrogen you used. At the end of March, there was only nearly 40 units of nitrogen on it, and everyone was kind of looking at me wondering, what are you doing there? But yeah. uh, no, as the crop went on, it finished off very good. Got it just under 2.5 tonne to the acre, 2.44 is what it finished. So it was definitely the most profitable crop that we grew in the farm last year, definitely, yeah. Roland, you took a big gamble cutting back the nitrogen. I don't think it's that big of a gamble, Tim. It's kind of the, the science is there to say, sure. When yeah. you test the GAI, it's, you make the decisions and you won't be that far off the mark. In 2012, we had a lot of oilseed rape flat on the ground and bad yields, and you kind of had to, you really had to study it and say, well, where's the, ensure that's not going to happen again. And it's yeah. not all about growth regulation, it's about seeding rate and nitrogen amounts as well. So you do the calculations and the science behind it is correct and it works and they're savings for the farmers as well. Like should the big saving is not even so much, to, well now it's the saving on nitrogen certainly, but for years it wasn't even the saving on nitrogen, it was to make sure you avoid lodging because yeah. that's, a lodging is a, like that's a huge killer in the yield of oilseed rape. You know? yeah. So we're after doing the GAI there now, the weighing scales is after coming up with a GI of three, the app is after coming up with the same, what's your strategy now for the next month or two months on this? Yeah, so I suppose it'll probably not get much nitrogen immediately because I'd say there's because the crop has got to this stage, there's obviously a good bit of residual nitrogen still in the soil. So I suppose you're going to end up in a situation where maybe by the middle to the end of March, it'll get about approximately 80 kilos of nitrogen. Most crops of rape in this part of the country will probably give, well certainly a lot of the ones we'd be looking after, we'll try, we'll try and encourage farmers to put two slaritinia sprays on them. So generally speaking, we put foliar in in with each of them or a foliar end product that also has magnesium in it. It's a super looking crop. Has it got organic manures in the autumn or is it, how, how is it after getting so strong looking? Yeah, well, so this was plough till so, and as it was being ploughed, there was seven tonne to the acre of chicken manure um, at that point. Um, yeah. That was the same done last year and definitely it gave itself a, a good kick start and I suppose there was great sowing conditions even for winter sowing then later on, so it was warm. The other thing about it is like, there's a fair significant saving 80 kilos of nitrogen, about 65 or 66 units. What about like the cost of that organic manure? Did it cost you anything? Or? So the organic manure was delivered here. The only cost was the contractor for actually spreading it. And that worked out around about 20, 25 euro an acre. Okay. So when you bring it all back versus putting bag fertilizer on later, it's a, it's a massive saving, yeah. So Ronan, the crop has a GAI of three. You have a strategy that you're not going to put any fertilizer on until the middle of March. It's getting about 60 units in total and some foliar nitrogen later on, kind of a flowering or later. PGRs, what are you going to do with a PGR in this crop? It'll get PGRs, it'll get a strong hit, of, like either a Carrix or a Caramba or something that maybe with a, a, a proline product for disease control I'd say in about three weeks time or you know the weather dictates when a lot of this happens sometimes last year we had crops similar conditions this got it in the autumn some got it in the spring there was there much difference in the yield I don't know why you have it it's hard to figure it out some people would say there was some people would say it didn't make a difference but certainly the one that goes on I think in early March makes a difference and the man that's going to be cutting us had you any problems cutting the aver on last year no none whatsoever now, the crop was very tall to the point of uh, spraying off but um no, look, it got its three weeks, so it didn't. It kind of broke itself down. But no, there wasn't any, uh, there wasn't any real loss. And look, with a good yield of just under two and a half, it seems like there wasn't too many, too many issues. No. So, Roland, not every crop is as good as what Peter has here today. What's your standard approach to managing oilseed rape crops that might have a GAI of one or something around that? Here you have a crop with high vigor, good soil fertility, and organic manure, and so reasonably early the twentieth of August. So I suppose you take any of them things away from it, it's very easy to end up in a crop where your GAI is one. So I think it's back to the same principle. Just look at what you're starting with. You want to get your GAI of 3.5 achieved before flowering. Yes. So you're not, you don't have it just the day before you flower. So you have to start putting on nitrogen earlier. You'd like to feel you'd be putting on maybe 20 or 30 units in the next week and then maybe the later you are starting the more you'll apply it. You'll hold back then your 50 units for yield formation as late as you can possibly go in 
And then I would still be big in favour of putting down the foliar end. I think that has a huge, I think that really helps the yield. Much. And it's not that expensive to do it. You're going through with fungicides anyway, so I think it okay. makes a lot of sense. Roland, Peter, thanks very much for your time. I'll let you get back to work. So in summary again, managing crops of rape, your basing is on how much biomass is in the crop. That's what the GAI measures. And the strategies and the science, as the lads have shown here, certainly pays off and does huge savings for farmers growing crops of oilseed rape in 2023.